PlayStation 5. Much more powerful than you ever imagined. That's what I'm going to call this video. And there's a reason why I'm going to do it. Um, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while now, but I've been putting it off because there's so many other things I want to do. And I thought, you know, if I let it simmer a little bit, it might um, actually make more sense, especially if I give you guys a background on who I am and, you know, the things I want to talk about uh, uh, from a, um, uh, you know, point of relevancy, it, it, it would make more sense. But this morning, we actually got a rumor uh, that, lo and behold, uh, the PlayStation 5 is going to be based on a Navi GPU. It's going to be an SoC based on a Navi GPU with a Ryzen core. Big surprise, huge surprise. I'm being sarcastic. But because of that, people are now able to extra extrapolate things that they weren't able to do before. Even though we all kind of knew that Navi is the direction, it only makes sense, especially with a 7 nanometer node, uh, is the direction that the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox 2 need to go in. Um, so, just to get to the nitty gritty, obviously, uh, what the, and I forget who it was that put this out, my apologies, I know if I'm going to use somebody else's information, I, I should at least, uh, be able to reference the website, but I plumb forgot. Um, but they're saying that they've got inside information, that dev kits are already out there, uh, I'm not entirely sure if the dev kits are, have an APU or an SOC, based on both Navi and Ryzen, a Ryzen core, uh, for the CPU. But uh, that goes coincides with the, the leak that uh, Navi will, um, or that the PlayStation 5 will indeed um, have these uh, chips in the SoC. And people have been extrapolating the type of power potentially that, um, that they're going to um, be able to uh, bring to bear. I will say this. And I've got both praise, credit, and uh, a little bit of critique for uh, Red, uh, Red Gaming Tech. Um, a few years ago, I'm not sure if it was two or three years ago, they mentioned something about an APU that AMD's working on um, called uh, Greyhawk. Okay, and it's uh, only apropos here that I've got a uh, same skin in... Uh, in white with black dots. But uh, but yes, it's going to be called Greyhawk, and it's based on the Navi uh, graphics chipset. Now, if you know anything about the um, the roadmap that AMD is going to be, that, that AMD is laid out, in I think late 2018, early 2019, they're going to be able to roll out, they're going to be rolling out a uh, GPU based on uh, Navi called Navi, which is the successor to Vega. Now, when you consider that Vega is running between, I think, 13 and maybe 12 and 13 um, teraflops, I think in some cases the water cooled 64, the Vega 64, I think might be um, might be just hitting 14 teraflops. Excuse me. Then uh, you can see that a successor, and that's based on a 14 nanometer note. So uh, a successor to Vega um, in the guise of Navi uh, would clearly be able to do jumping from 14 nanometers to seven, just some rough math. You'd be looking at about uh, 56 teraflops, maybe somewhere between uh, 50 and 60 uh, for two reasons. Uh, the jump from 14 to seven nanometers might not correlate mathematically. In other words, they could be using something a lot bigger, eight, nine, or even 10 actual nanometers. Um, nan the nanometer measurements are more a marketing term these days. They have been since, I think the last time they were actually used accurately was for 28, if not 28, maybe 32 nanometers. And then after that, they've been using them uh, from a marketing standpoint to communicate the greater power, but not necessarily the scientific measurement. It's getting harder and harder to shrink these dyes. Um, so uh, you, they're not, uh, basically, this is the truth of the industry. You're not actually getting a 14 nanometer node. You're not actually getting a uh, 7 nanometer no, uh, node. I, I can only imagine because the manu each manufacturer has a node that is classified as a certain size, but in reality measured differently. So take that for what it is. Uh, but if you're 
if you're kind of like me, you're thinking, okay, you know, worst case scenario, uh, you're looking at about uh, a 50 teraflop uh, GPU once they make them uh, as large as they can uh, for whatever production run they're doing uh, for that. So you can easily extrapolate that if you're looking at it from the standpoint, and I know we're talking about the PlayStation 5, and I'm actually here on my Xbox One X, but there's a reason I'm playing on the Xbox One X. Um, because I'm going to use the Xbox as a reference, okay? One of the first things I want to, um, I want to kind of backtrack just a little bit. Like, again, I'm going to be fast and loose with this whole conversation, and it may be well over 40, 40 minutes broken up into uh, three videos. But, um, when you're predicting, you have to take two things into account. Uh, you have to take in the cadence or the uh, history. What have they done? What are the trends? And then you have to take in mitigating circumstances. So if you look at the PlayStation, okay, um, we're at PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, really, and we're going to be headed towards PlayStation 5. That'll be the fifth iteration of this console. So when you look at it from that standpoint, you can track what's what's going on. And from the PlayStation 1 to the PlayStation 4, in graphics technology, it's been roughly, roughly, a magnitude, an order of magnitude, uh, increase in power in, in, for the layman out there, an order of magnitude is about 10 times. So you've been getting, every six years, about 10 times GPU performance. It hasn't always... It hasn't always correlated to uh, central processing unit because central processing units, because of their legacies and the very nature of the instruction, the executables, they tend to not give you as great a yield in performance increases for your investment in transistors. It's, it'd be a little difficult for me to really explain to you the mathematics behind all that. So that, that'd be another hour just to do that. So. Uh, take my word for it. If not, do your own independent research and, and you'll find that that's very much the case. So as the GPU increases in power because of the available real estate in transistor count, you don't have the same correlating increase in CPU power. That's just a fact. Um, so, okay. So that's that. Uh, as far as what we're seeing, roughly 10 times the increase. As far as memory, and I'm playing a little fast and loose here, and I'm, I'm not going to be 100% accurate for uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, for a while, your video memory and your system memory were separate. And so on the PlayStation 1, you had 2 megabytes of system memory and 1 gigabyte of video memory. So if you go by the uh, two, gig, uh, 2 megabytes in system memory and, and you kind of overlook the addition of video memory in both the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, you'll find that the system memory has uh, increased 16-fold every time. So by that logic, and I think for the Xbox, you had a, uh, the 360, you had a unified video and um, graphics memory, and then on um, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, they both became unified for both memory, both system memory and graphics memory, video memory. So, um, if you look at that trend, if you look at that trend from the 16-fold increase, that would tell us that with 8 gigabytes of memory on the PlayStation 4, that means you would be looking at uh, based on the uh, trends alone, uh, you would be looking at 128 gigabytes for the PlayStation 5. Okay, so now before everybody loses their minds and points out how ridiculously stupid that sounds, I am fully aware that based on A, prices, and B, uh, system needs, that because the memory has been the single thing that's been growing disproportionate to the overall system's growth and capacity, that that may not be the one area that you need to st stick to 
uh, true to this trend. I'll give you that. Uh, so we're looking at tenfold increase in uh, memory and sixteen increase in, I mean tenfold increase in computing power and or graphics computing power anyways and a sixteenfold uh, increase in memory. Okay. Now as far as the CPU, um, about as lost as most of you guys, I really don't know what how much of an increase that's going to be. I'm going to tell you this though. And you'll have to bear with me. I'm going to take a sip of water here. I will say this. There was a disrupting effect in the power of the CPU when we went from the uh, PlayStation 3 with the cell processor, which was extraordinarily powerful. I'm not sure how much more powerful it was in the processor uh, than the CPU in the uh, PlayStation 2, but there was a significant difference, uh, much more so than the, I think it was two to three times difference between the uh, CPU power from the PlayStation 3 to the PlayStation 4. Uh, one of the main reasons is that instead of a custom CPU that uh, tried to be as multi-threaded as possible, they went to a legacy 486 CPU uh, for ease of programming because that, those are the platforms as far as uh, uh, general programming and executables and those things that the majority of the of the programming base as far as professionals uh, professional programmers are accustomed to so that makes sense to aggravate the situation further uh, they decided to go with a uh, SOC system on chip or an APU basically which is to say that they decided to take a uh, a cost-cutting measure, and two things happened here, or maybe three. Uh, first, they went with an APU, so that means now you're combining the graphics processor and the CPU on one chip. Uh, secondly, they uh, went with a larger uh, nanometer processor, fabrication processor, uh, the 28 nanometer instead of a 22 or a 20 nanometer, which was just becoming available at the time. And I suspect, and I, I think I've mentioned this in other, vehicle, in other videos, because they, um, they couldn't afford it. Uh, it uh, these chips were being in much higher demand uh, by the cell phone manufacturers who could afford to pay substantially more for them. So uh, they were forced to go with a larger uh, transistor. And then the third is because of the uh, uh, the economic depression or the I'm not sure how you, how what they call it uh, recession. Um, their target price for the system, even though on average, uh, in the uh, what was it seventh gen, um, you were looking at a five hundred dollar price tag, and that's the most expensive Xbox three hundred and sixty was five hundred, and the cheapest. PlayStation, um, PlayStation uh, 3 uh, was $500 as well. So the mean price for both systems uh, roughly would be around $500. So instead of going with that price point, they decided to go with something cheaper. Now, Xbox, Microsoft did go with a $500 price point, but they included the Connect, which I didn't want anything to do with, and a lot of people didn't want either, and that they, they suffered because of that. Um, so they decided to go with uh, a, a much cheaper, uh, both of them had a base price of $400. So that gave us systems that were considerably uh, less powerful than what I, I thought. I thought we'd get them in uh, 2014, believe it or not, and I thought they'd be about 3.6 gigabytes. And we got them early, and they were substantially, substantially weaker than that. So I'm going to pause this part of the video and I'll be back in just a second guys all right